Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the ATI study manual, ATI T study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 166. At this point in the game, we have already finished doing all the math problems that appear in this in this book, except the last part, which is the quiz, which is the quiz which you will find on page number 99. Page, it should say page 99, not 95. Page 99, turn to it please and you will see that on that page, on that page you will see a quiz and that quiz that you see there on page 99 is what I'm referring to as a test number three there, uh, there are two more tests that we did that appeared in the previous edition the fifth edition and if you're interested in getting some more practice by working through the two tests that appeared in the previous edition you'll find the solutions to all of those problems in, the, in those two exams from day number 61 through 70 the test number one and day 71 through 80 all the problems from this books were solved from 1 through 80, from day 1 through 80. Let's get going, see what we can do here. Problem number 1 on page number 99. Problem number 1 on page number 99. They're asking us to, it says, which of the following sets of terms are, in which of the following terms, in which of the following sets of terms are all three values equal? So we have to find an answer choice where all three values are equal. Okay, number one. It says which set has all three values equal to each other? And our job is to find which which set has all three values that are equal to each other. Let's look at answer choice. Let's begin with answer choice D. In D, we are given seven over one thousand, seven over ten thousand. Let's work on that. Shall we? Before we go any more, let's go. Let's work on it. 7 over 1000. Before we worry about 7 over 1000, let's deal with something simpler. 7 over 100. But we know 7 over 100, anything out of 100, any number out of 100, that's a percent because the word percent, as we have talked many times, as we have talked, uh, discussed many times before, the word percent literally means per 100 out of 100. 42 divided by 100 is 42%. 37 over 100 is 37%. 4.37 over 100 would simply be 4.37 percent. Had it been 7 out of 100, that would have been exactly 7 percent, which in turn, expressed in decimal, would have been 0.07. Okay, watch what happens. But we, we do not have we do not have 7 over 100. We have 7 over 1,000. We have 7 over 1,000. So divide the whole thing. Divide the whole thing by 10. So if you stick one more zero here, we have to divide this by 10, we have to divide this quantity by 10. And if it bothers you what I just did here, we are basically dividing the entire thing by 10. So 10 times 100 now becomes 1,000. And what we find is, what we find is, 7 over 1,000 is equal to 7% divided by 10. 7, 7 divided by 10 is 0.7. So it becomes a 0.7%. And what is that equal to in decimal? Well, it was 0 0.07 to begin with. 0 0.07 to begin with, if you divide by another 10, the decimal moves one more space and it will become 0 0.007. 0 0.007. And that, that would be the correct answer if that's what they're showing in D. Let's see what they're actually showing in D. So we have seven over one thousand, seven over thousand, which they say, which they say seven over one thousand 
they say is equal to 0.7. No, it's not equal to 0.7, it's equal to 0 0.007. We don't have to read any more, we don't have to worry about what follows afterwards. It is wrong. Answer twice D is wrong. It is not 0.7 expressed in decimal, it would be 0 0.007. 0 0.007. We don't have to worry about anything else. Let's look at answer choice C. In answer choice C, we have 12 over 5. In answer choice C, we have 12 over 5. Then we have 0 0.24, 0 0.24. And then we have 240%. 240%. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Since we have to express the, in this, in, in, since we have to express this thing in equivalent decimal form and percentage form, let's convert this into percentage form. 12, 12 over 5. What what happens? If we can get 100 at the bottom, any fraction, any fraction with a 100 at the bottom, that is expressed. That is the, that that is in percentage. That would be the term in percentage. If we can express this thing, the quantity out of 100, but we don't have a, we don't have it out of 100. We have it out of 5, 12 out of 5. How can we make that 5 into 100? Well, it's very simple. If we were to take our 5 and multiply it by 20, no, 5 times 20 is 100. But if you're going to multiply the bottom by 5, we must multiply the top by 5. Otherwise, the value will change. If we multiply this 12 over 5 by 12 over 5 by 20 over 20, that's fine because 20 over 20 is just 1. We haven't done anything to it. We have simply multiply the quantity by 1. And if you multiply any quantity by just 1, it doesn't change its value. Except this 1 is incognito. 20 over 20 is 1, but it's incognito. So here we have it. We have, a, we have 100 at the bottom. And what do we get on the top? 12 times 2 is 24 and a 0, so it's 240. 240 out of 100, well that's 240%. That's 240%. So this part is correct. 12 over 5 is indeed 240%. But it is not 0.24 expressed in decimal. 0.24 is 24%. We don't want 24%. We want 240%. For example, if one when you did in decimal when one one is equal to 100%. If you have a whole of something, that's 100%. If you have 2.0 expressed in decimal, two times something is 200%. And therefore, 240% expressed in decimal should have been, should have been 2.4, not not 0.24, not 0.24, but 2.4 would have been the right answer. Would have been the right answer, but that's not what they give us. Answer choice C is also wrong. Let's look at answer choice B. Let's look at answer choice B. We need the room. We need to raise everything now. Don't just pick the right answer and move on. Ask yourself, what is wrong with the others? What is wrong with the others? And ask yourself again, what can I do to these quantities to make it correct? We will learn more that way. In answer choice B, in answer choice B, I need to put a clip here because this page keeps flying. Just give me a second. There we go. In answer choice B, we have a third. Then we have 0.3 repeating and so far it's fine. So far it's fine. One third does indeed equal 0.3 repeating. One third equals 0.3333 repeating which is same as 0.3 with the bar there on the top means it's, it's repeating. That so far is correct. So far is correct. So if the third quantity is also equal then we are in business. And then they go on to say that that is equal to then they go on to say that that is equal to 3.33 how do they express this? 3.33 percent repeating and that is wrong that is wrong a third of something a third of something cannot be a three percent of that amount a third of something is 33 percent is 33.3 percent repeating or if you want to be or if you want to be a little bit more sophisticated you can write that as 33 and a third percent point three or oh, oh, one third is equal to 33 point 33.33 repeating or 33 and a third percent or 0 0.03 expressed in decimal.
repeating. It does not equal 3%. That's what's wrong with B. B is wrong. Answer must, answer must be obviously A. Let's see what A says. Let's, see, let's do A on the top. Now for A, for answer choice A, we must know our eighth. It's very important. You must know your eighth. We are given one eighth. Then we are given 0.125. Then we are given 12.5%. You must know your eighth. I would, I would like you to watch day number 9, where we talk about know your decimals. Day number 9. And I'm hoping that you have already watched all of them, 1 through 80. Watch every single video there. This is, even though this is 5th edition, it doesn't hurt to have more practice. Because there are a lot of things that we talked about that I talked about in the 5th edition that I did not bother to repeat. I don't want to keep standing here and keep repeating the same thing over and over again like a parrot. So there are, there are things that I covered in day 1 through 80 which you will not find uh, the discussion of in, in, in the 6th edition. Watch day number 9 where it says know your decimal. When, you, when you're sitting there to take the T's, they expect you to know, and listen very carefully, they expect you to know your quarters, your eighths, your tenths, and your thirds. You must know all the thirds in the decimal form, in the percentage form. You must know your tenths by heart in percentage, decimal, and fraction form. You must know your fifths, and you must know your quarters, and you must know your eighths. And if you don't, you're in trouble. So let's talk about what, a, what, a, what an eighth is. An eighth, before we worry about, before we worry about the eighth, eighth is derived from a quarter. So we have to know what a quarter is. A quarter, of course everybody knows, is 25%. Everybody will tell you that a quarter is 25%, which is simply, well, I should have put, I should have put the decimal here and percentage there. It's a 20, 25% when expressed in decimal is just 0.25. What is an eighth? That's the question. What's it, what is an eighth? Well, an eighth, an eighth is simply half of a quarter. It's simply, if you take your quarter and you multiply it by a half, what you end up here is an eighth. Because one times one is one and two times four is eight. So if you're going to take a half of that, we must take a half of that and we must take a half of that. So this quantity is an eighth and therefore eighth is simply half of 25%. Half of 25%. What is half of 25%? I don't know. I know what half of 24 is. That I do know. Half of 24 is 12. Half of 24 is 12. Therefore half of 25 must be 12 and a half. 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half percent or if you like 12.5 percent. 12.5 percent when expressed as a decimal will simply be 0.25 divided by 2 which is simply going to be 0.125. You just have to know these things. So these are all equivalent. And since that's what we since that's what we are being shown in answer choice A, therefore A works and B, C, and D do not work. Let's move on to question number two, shall we? Let's move on to question number two. But you must know your eights. Another source. Another source where you will find where, where, where you will learn these basic basic concepts is a series of basic math which I don't have on the blackboard here. There is a series that you will find on my channel, simply called basic math. It doesn't say basic math for T's. It just says basic math. Just type in basic math day one. It has 100 videos. Watch as many as you can, and you will get, you might get something out of you might get something out of that. Answer try question number two. Question number two says, which of the following is the correct way to simplify the expression into a lowest expression in the lowest terms? And they and they give you something on the top there which I left out. Here's what is given to us. This is this is one half plus two thirds plus a three quarter plus a three-quarter. Well, in order for us to be able to 
add or subtract fractions, again that is something we learn in 1 through 80, we, we, that is something that we covered in basic math series. In order for us to be able to add or subtract fractions, the denominators have to be the same. They have to have common denominator. Common denominator. Somehow we have to find here, somehow we have to find what is known as least least common multiplier. It has it's better to have the least least one possible. The smallest number that you can think of, least common multiplier, least common multiplier, which is which is sometimes referred to as LCM. LCM, least common multiplier, is just a very fancy way of saying what is the smallest number that you can think of that happens to be a multiple of two and a three and a four. The smallest number that you can think of this happens to be a multiple of two, three, and a four. This is how we find it: two, three, and four. Write it like this, and start dividing by the prime number, the smallest prime number that we can think of, where at least two of them are divisible by, by the quantity is two. Two is the smallest prime factor. Two divided by two is one. Three remains three. Three, three is same as three, and then four becomes two. That's it. We are done. That's all. It, that's all it was. Three is the prime number. Two is the prime number. So the process stops. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 is the smallest number, the 12 happens to be the least number, smallest number, smallest quantity that happens to be a multiple of both, that happens to be a multiple of all three. It happens, 12 is a multiple of 2 because 2 times 6 is 12, 12 is a multiple of 3 because 3 times 4 is 12, 12 also happens to be a multiple of 4 because 4 times 3 is 12. So we have to convert all of these into 12. The common denominator here is going to be the least common denominator is 12. Now that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we could not have used 24 or 36 or 34 uh, or 24 trillion. 24 trillion would have also worked as a common denominator. But the bigger than bigger the denominator, the more work you will end up doing. So instead of 12, if you end up using 24 or 36 or 48, you're just going to end up doing more work. The least common denominator will give you the least amount of work. How can we convert the 2 into a 12? It's very simple. Take the first quantity and multiply top and bottom by 6. Now it has a denominator of 12. 6 times 2 is 12. How do we convert this into 12? Well, take this fraction 2 over 2 over 3 and multiply it by 4 over 4. Because 4 over 4 is 1, we haven't changed its value. We're simply multiplying it by 1. So 4 times 3 is 12. How do we convert this into 12? Well, 3 over 3. And it's done. And now we can do our addition. Now we can simplify them. So 6 times 1 is 6, so we get 6 over 12 plus 8 over 12 plus 9 over 12. We are looking for something that looks like this. We are looking for something that looks like this because the question was, the question was which of the following is the correct way to simplify the expression to a fraction in the lowest term. That's what this is. Let's look at why other answer choices are wrong. And this, this correct answer choice that you see here is answer choice D. Let's see, let's see what's wrong with A, B, and C very quickly, okay? Very quickly we're going to see why A, B, and C are not correct. We're done with this part. Let's look at, let's look at A. A says, A says that one half plus two third plus three quarter equals six ninth. Well, what they're doing here, what they're doing here is 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, so there's 6 there, 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4, the person is simply adding the denominator, numerator and denominator like that. How can, you, how can you convince this person, how can you under, uh, make, make, explain to this person that this logic is not correct? You cannot add fractions like this. If you were a teacher, if you were a teacher and if you had to explain to somebody why this is not a valid uh, answer, why this is not a correct answer, how would you explain to them? By providing, by providing this person a simple example. For example, for example, you could explain this person that by this logic, one half plus a one quarter, which what happens? One half plus a one quarter by this logic is one plus one is two, and two plus four is six, and six divided by two when you reduce it is a third. How can, think of this in terms of money, think of this in terms of money. Half a dollar is 50 cents. 50 cents and a quarter of a dollar is 25 cents. How can a 50 cents plus a 25 cents be a third of a dollar? A third of a dollar is 33 cents. It doesn't work this way. It's wrong. You cannot do this thing. 
Let's look at answer choice B. Let's look at answer choice B. What's wrong with B? B says Point five, point six six, point five, point six six, plus I don't know why I don't have the B here. Plus point seven five equals one point nine one. I wonder what is wrong with it. One point nine one. But the simplest thing to do is simply add them up. Simply add them up. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. 0.5 is 50, 0.66 is 66, and 0.75 is 75, and you get 11. 1, carry 1. Uh, 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 9 is 19. So then what is wrong with it? And then of course decimal will go here. That's exactly what we have here. What is wrong with it? Do you see anything wrong with it? What is wrong here is the fact that, what happens, what is wrong here is the fact that originally what was given to us is this, this quantity that is given to us. Let me, let me erase the previous answer. This is what is given to us. Can you find out, can you figure out what is wrong with this work? Well, one half, one half is 0 0.5, three quarter is 0 0.75, but what is wrong here is that two third Two third does not equal 0 0.66. It does not equal. It is approximately 1.96 because the correct answer would be 0 0.666 repeating. This two third does not equal 0 0.66. So saying that 0 0.5 plus 0 0.66 plus 0 0.75 is equal to 1.91 is wrong. It is. It is. It is not equal to 1.91 because this is not correct, this is 0.66 repeating. So here, here you have 0.66 repeating at the end. So if you want to claim, if you want to claim this thing, 0.5 plus 0.66 plus 0.75, we have to say that it is approximately equal to 1.91 and not exactly equal to it. That's what's wrong with answer choice B. That's what's wrong with answer choice B. Let's quickly, very quickly see, take a look at answer choice C. In answer to IC, it says 612 Answer to IC says 1 half plus 2 third plus 3 quarter 1 half plus 2 third plus 3 quarters is equal to 6 over 24 And what is wrong with this thing? What do you suppose, what, what do you suppose the person is doing? What the person is doing here is that they're adding the numerator, the top part, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, and they're multiplying the bottom because somehow they think that common denominator simply means that you multiply the all the quantities, 2 times 3 times 4. How would you convince this person that this is not correct? The way you will convince this person that this is not correct is because you take the final answer of 6 over 24 and reduce it. 6 and 24. 24 is a multiple of 4. The 6. 24 is a multiple of 6, or if you don't if you don't want to divide top and bottom by 6 in one shot, you can divide by 2 and then by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, 6 becomes 3, and if you divide the bottom by 2, 2 has 1 2's and 4 has 2 2's. In other words, 24 divided by 2 is 12. 3 and a 12, let's divide one more time by 3, and 3 becomes 1, and 12 becomes 4. In other words, 6 over 24, if you were to divide top and bottom by 6 in one shot, 24 has 4 6's, it is 1 quarter. This quantity is one quarter. Six over twenty-four is one quarter. Ask yourself, how can how can it possibly be true? How can it possibly be true that think always helps to think in terms of money? Fifty cents, fifty cents, approximately sixty-seven cents, plus seventy-five cents. How can it possibly equal twenty-five cents? Three quarter is already way more than one quarter. Half is already more, way more than one quarter. Two third is already way more than one quarter. It cannot, it cannot, they cannot equal to one quarter, which is what's wrong with answer choice A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay?
Bueno, 